welcome everyone. This is an, an entirely different thing than the previous two, um, uh, two presentations. Um, and indeed, let's get up uh, to speed here. Um, so we're told that facial recognition allows systems to recognize and identify people on images. And AI certainly has made big strides in this domain. But a few steps further down the road, and we can no longer enter stores and access public places anonymously. We're told that Google is very smart at guessing what we're looking for. And indeed it is, scaringly so. But with that, it also propagates the most awful stereotypes. We're told that self-driving vehicles will take us everywhere without us having to worry about steering the car. And the AI car will know how to navigate empty streets. But then at one point, the car will have to decide, decide whether to hit Super Fido or a fo stock photo guy who appear out of, the, out of nowhere or crash our car into the lamppost. We're told that our children no longer have to go to the battlefields because anonymous weapon systems or killer drones can and will do the killing for us. But that may gamify warfare to the point of indifference about human life. Do we want all of this? Well, I don't think so. So what to do about it? Well, given that I'm a regulation scholar or a regulatory scholar, I would say regulate, as in control the whole thing. We have to set boundaries for AI development and use. Now, of course, I wasn't born yesterday, literally, and I understand that we're told a lot, also in AI land. Not all the AI promises are met, not all the positive or negative effects materialize. But still, serious issues are and will be materializing. So what to do? Well, that is not entirely straightforward. AI is a disruptive, disruptive technology on many accounts. Relations, work, society, life, everything will change. We're facing an unknown future, positive and negative. And with that, um, there is a need to carefully balance interests, which sometimes means calling in ethics frameworks to the rescue. Abstract principles, as in frame, ethics frameworks typically go, provide flexibility and room for actions appropriate to the context. And these ethics frameworks for AI have indeed been enacted in the U European Union, in China, in the US, India, everywhere. Now, the problem with these frameworks is that um, they're hardly enforceable and may lead to ethics washing. I, and more importantly, others think we need to do more. We need to take careful but bolder steps. And that is where the law comes in, in all the, its variety of sub subtlety, hard law, soft law, self-regulation, experimental regulation, everything will be put on the table. Law may incorporate sanctions, which makes it harder than ethics, harder in the sense as more enforceable. And the sanctions being in place makes that people will move in certain directions. And that may also be the reason why industry is not too fond of law and regulation. Now, resorting to law is an approach, it's not the answer, because law itself may become disrupted by AI. In some cases, uh, problems simply aren't problems, at least not from a legal perspective. There are many rules out there that equally apply to AI as, it do, uh, as they do to other things. Now, if that's the case, bring out the whip and enforce. Sometimes the simple legal answers are so unsatisfactory, but a simple fix may bring the topic be back in known territory. So in the past, we've had issues with windsurfing boards and segways uh, because they didn't fit the existing categories that we had in law. Now, resolving this issue was fairly simple. Simply classify the segways where you want them to ride, be it on the road or on the pavement, and, and classify them accordingly. Sometimes the issues are bigger and we need more constructive or reconstructive work. So we know, for instance, that the classical distinction that holds in many legal domains between agents, humans, and objects, things, um, uh, is breaking down because AI is increasingly taking the middle ground. It's not exactly an object, but it's also not exactly an agent. 
And this may require a significant legal overhaul, but that's for another occasion. Now, yesterday we've actually entered another domain and that is the domain of what I've called harder regulation on this slide, meaning more significant than simple easy fixes um, but less than major legal overhaul. So what happened? Now, last week, um, the draft, a draft of the European Commission proposal for an EU AI regulation was leaked. And really, uh, that hit me hard. I didn't see that coming, um, my mistake, but that happens. So now the, um, the, the EU AI regulation may have the same impact as the GDPR had um, a, a couple of years ago. Now, the, the, the draft was leaked last week and I had to teach um, last Monday and had to do this talk today. So I scrambled this weekend to get my head around the leaked draft. And on Sunday, I came up with this um, applicability diagram, which features the first eight uh, or so articles in, in, the, in the, uh, the, the leaked draft. And this, uh, this simple, di well, this diagram helps you determine whether this thing is for you. Now, if it looks complicated to you, then that's because it is. Then yesterday, 12 o'clock, the official proposal was published. And we're talking about 107 pages of dense text um, containing 85 provisions and 17 pages of very relevant annexes that you need to incorporate in trying to understand what this is. And yes, to my um, dismay, the, the actual proposal is different from the one that I studied over the weekend, significantly different even. Now, obviously, I haven't had time to go through the entire thing and get my head completely around it, um, um, but I, I did my best and I'll uh, try to give you a flavor of this whole thing. And remember, I, I first saw the, the actual text 29 hours ago. So what does it try to do? Well, the regulation aims to make sure that AI systems that, we, that are developed and deployed treat us humans as humans and that they fit in with established fundamental rights in the European Union. So much of it is preventing us from being succumbed to computers that simply say no. And if we leave things to, uh, to be handled by AIs, then only if we're damn sure that they're reliable and robust. And in that sense, Lika's presentation provided an interesting sort of um, um, twist here that we may come, come back to. Okay, what does the regulation do? Well, basically it provides a risk-based approach to AI regulation. And that means that uh, more serious measures are taken um, when the uh, systems are more dangerous. And at the core of the whole regulation is the concept of high risk AI systems. And um, high risk systems are defined and I'll come back to that a little later. But for now note uh, the relatively simple definition of AI on the top end right. So it, it's, it talks about AI techniques and basically it incorporates everything that we have out there, connectionist approach, um, traditional symbolic logic-based approach, but also statistical approaches. And then um, the AIs have to take human defined tasks as a starting point and they generate output. And that could be content predictions or decisions. So also um, things that we see online, uh, such as deep fakes, which is content, um, fall under this definition and that are clearly addressed in the regulation. Also noteworthy is that certain systems are completely prohibited. There is a ban on certain AI systems. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> so prohibited systems are systems that manipulate or exploit vulnerable people or, or groups. For instance, through deep fakes, but also in a number of other occasions. What is also prohibited is the type of Chinese social scoring uh, applications where people's behavior online and offline is being tracked and whether people are assessed um, or um, assessed trustworthy or not based on their, on their activities. And also what is prohibited is real-time remote biometric identification by law enforcement uh, agencies. And real-time remote biometric identification is basically um, things like facial recognition. There are a lot of exceptions uh, are, that are deeply troubling to me, but um, maybe we'll get that in, in the, um, the Q&A. 
Okay, the main course deals with high risk systems, and these are defined in an annex. And um, basically, there are eight domains in which these are uh, being um, pre uh, designated. Um, and they're listed here on the slide, and I've really condensed the annexes, but let me pick out one, and, and, and they're primary, primarily addressing uh, public sector things, but let me pick out employment. So um, clearly within the scope of the regulation are HR type of applications for recruitment, assessing um, employees and, and, and what have you. Now, if you have, um, are deploying or building a high risk AI system, then you must meet requirements and obligations outlined in, in the regulation. And um, um, these center around two core concepts. One is risk data and quality management um, that basically help you, but also require you to make systems that do, do what as they're actually advertising. And the second mechanism is that of accountability and transparency. And an interesting thing here is the, um, the central role that conformity assessment plays. So systems will have to be assessed in view of um, hard standards to be drawn up by standard setting bodies, and then leading to um, uh, CE marks that we see all over products and, and, and services. Oh, nice. And you have to register Sorry. your system. Sorry to interrupt. It's I know I have- uh, <laughs> Your time is running left. out. Could you kindly wrap up? I, I know, yeah. So, um, okay, this is what the, the new scheme uh, looks like. Now, if you're confused by the whole thing, uh, then um, um, understand I'm too, um, but we have some time. We're still at the beginning. So the, uh, the, the proposal was launched yesterday and now we will have a lot of opposition from industry, from European parliament, from the member states that will lead to changes and maybe significant ones. And um, my bet is that it will take up to 25, 2025, 2026 um, for this to turn into real legislation if we get to the point of harmony at all. Now, if you're interested in keeping up with my adventures in trying to frame the regulation, follow me on Twitter. <laughs>